What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode. Uh, in this episode, we are going to shave the lowers from my Greasy Dozen build. If you guys have followed me on Instagram, um, you've probably seen I've already done this fucking step. Man, I didn't film it last time. Uh, I just got in the fucking zone and got it done and didn't film it. So, lucky for you guys, I fucked up and completely spaced that the lowers that I got last time are the one inch lowers, aka sliders, for Sportster. Uh, Sportster comes with two sizes. One inch for the later years and three quarter inch for the earlier years. Um, I'm using the earlier years, um, mostly because that's what I have parts for. And because I ordered the three quarter inch axle spoolie. So, as you can see, I've completely already done this. I polished my trees, uh, shaved and polished the lowers, uh, rebuilt the front end, put all new seals, all that bullshit in it, and didn't even get to run it. And now I have to rip it apart, had to buy new goddamn seals. And thankfully, this chopper community is so goddamn, um, what am I looking for? Giving, uh, helpful. I had some luck and was able to find some new lowers. Um, unfortunately, I still have to fucking cut these down. Sorry for the language. I'm trying to work on that. Um, I still have to shave these. And then I have to go through the steps of polishing them again. And then obviously I have to do all new seals again. So... In this video, I'm going to show you how to, and listen, I'm not a professional. Don't take my advice. I'm just showing you how I do it. Um, I'm going to do it on my lathe, but I will also go through the steps on how to do it if you do not have a lathe. The first time I shaved lowers, I didn't have a lathe. I had to use my um, grinder. I used the cutoff wheel, and I used a flap disc. And it's very doable. You can do it. I did it on the stepchild build. It just takes longer. It's harder to get them as nice. And it takes longer to polish. So, I am, I'm not going to drag this out in this long video. Um, I will do like short segments in between. And make sure you guys know step by step on what I'm doing. And hopefully if this doesn't take me too long, um, I'll get into the polishing part of it as well. Um, so, we're going to get started. I'm going to get these uh, these new lowers cleaned up a little bit. Um, going to put them in the vise. First, I have to find something. I'm probably going to throw a cloth down here so I don't smash up um, the lowers. The good part about it is when you still have all of the tabs on it for the brake and everything, you can clamp that into the vise to cut the tops. But when it comes down to when you cut one side off, make sure you put something in your vise so you don't have those teeth marks. So, let's get started. Alright, so you guys can see, this is what I was talking about. When you still have all of the ears on there, um, you can clamp the ear in the vise. I still use the cloth, just to be safe. But um, once you flip it over, you're not going to have any ear. So usually what I do is I'll clamp somewhere here and have... The uh, lower standing vertical. So it just makes it easier. Um, like I said, I'm not going to go through all of the steps of cutting every ear off. Because there is a shitload of ears that I have to cut off. So I'll get uh, some of that. I'll speed it up so it doesn't take so goddamn long. And uh, that's it. So pretty much what I'm going to do. First of all, I always wear gloves. Because when you don't, you get gnarly ass scars like that. That's from sinking one of these blades down to the bone, and it sucks. So pretty much all I'm going to do is uh, take my grinder, go as low as I can. Let's see here. Go as low as I can, probably about here. You pretty much want to take off as much material as you can with the cutoff um, wheel <coughs> without cutting this. Um, the more you take off, the less you're going to have to take off. With When you get to this point, like I said, I got it as close as 
I actually uh, wanted to get with that blade. Um, listen, side note, this stuff makes a damn mess. It literally goes everywhere. So do not be doing this in your mom's kitchen. Um, so next step, if you don't have a lathe, you are going to get a flat disc. Um, so as you can see, this is a different grinder. I run two grinders, one for my cutting wheel, one for my flat disc. It just makes it easier. It saves goddamn time. Um, oh, wow. This one is serious. 36 grit. This thing will rip this down in seconds. Um, this is a little excessive for this because uh, you're going to be spending a lot of time polishing those marks out. Um, I mean, I would do probably like an 80 grit and then... Like an 80 grit flat disc and then maybe bump up to something that's a little bit, once you start getting really damn tight to it, um, bump up into something that's not so aggressive and you will appreciate it later on when you start polishing these damn things. All right, guys. So we got this one on the lathe. Uh, so this is how I clamp it in. Listen, like I said, I'm not a goddamn professional. I just know what works for me. So um, I pretty much bring the jaws right to... The lip here, um, the key is do not over tighten this. You will crack this shit. Um, just don't, don't over tighten it. Um, and pretty much I'll just go around and make sure that every jaw is butted right up against that lip. And uh, that'll ensure a nice spin for you. Make sure it's not all lopsided. Um, so you can see with this one, because I'm using a lathe, I didn't care. I didn't get that close because I'll be able to just chip it right off. Um, the key is um, to take little bits off at a time. You can see this is barely grazing that. Um, I already did a couple passes just to get the machine all set up, but um, that's pretty much it. Just little passes back and forth. I've seen a lot of guys just go ram right in there, and it works for them. You know what I mean? I am just overcautious and do not want this goddamn thing blowing up in my face. So uh, I'm going to get to work on this. It takes a little while on a lathe. Um, so I'm going to get All right, so, like I said, I got my sand tape in the water. I put a little bit of water on the slider itself. Make sure the sandpaper is all wet. I mean, I don't know if everybody does wet sanding. I just see, I don't know, in my eyes, it looks better as a finished product. And it doesn't make so much, so much of a fuck, goddamn mess. So, let's do it. Let's take it like that. And that's it. Um, it's pretty much just that step repeated over and over and over and over again. And uh, like I said, I'm going to start at 500. Um, I think the lathe did a pretty decent job. So I don't think I have to start lower than that. Um, start at 500 and I'll work up to 1200 and then once I get up to 1200, um, hopefully it's looking good enough. That's usually what I polish to. Um, you can see it in my front end. Um, so yeah, I'll polish it to 1200 and I don't have any kind of crazy polish or anything like that. I'm building an entire bike, so I don't have money. I don't just have extra money to be buying all this crazy polish stuff that costs a million dollars. I just don't. Um, I just use, and I know it looks backwards because I have the camera facing towards me, but I just use the mother's aluminum polish. That's it. Um, it's still not cheap for something this big, and you will go through this if you're polishing a bunch of stuff on a bike pretty goddamn fast, but it's still not cheap. This is like 30 bucks, um, and that's what I'm saying. Once you start getting into like the high-end stuff, forget about it, um, but I've had great success with mothers, so 
if you guys are going to do it, I recommend it. Um, and again, if you don't have a lathe, um, so I got two other ways that I did it before, before I owned a lathe. Um, I don't know where the other one is, but I have this right here. This is just a buffing pad. It goes right into a drill. That's it. Then I got that at Napa. There's like three bucks. And this thing absolutely kills it. It works so goddamn good. Um, Mother's also makes a ball that is a drill attachment. Or, I know everybody's got a Harbor Freight. Go grab yourself one of these. Or if you just already have a bench grinder, you can use it. Some people say don't use it. Get an actual polishing machine. Because it makes the arms longer. So you can get bigger stuff in there. But I haven't had a problem yet. And uh, I just bought these little buffing wheels right here. This is an eight inch setup. And then I also have, I believe a four inch setup over there on the bench. But uh, yeah, these also work great. This is what I did my trees with my front end. So listen, man, you don't have to have a lot of money to turn out nice stuff. It just, if you have the passion and drive to do it, you can make stuff look great on a budget. So that's what this video is for. I'm gonna keep crap. All right, guys, so. I got it down to 1200 <coughs> Uh For anybody that hasn't paused before, it takes a while. It takes just as long as it does to shave the lowers themselves. Um, it's obviously a little dirty. Those lines aren't actually in the metal. That's just from being dirty, from sanding. Um, you can tell it's already pretty bright. If I just clean this up, wipe it down, look mint. Um, but like I said, I'm going to go f ahead and start using the mother's polish. Um, pretty much what I do. Pretty self-explanatory here. I just take a rag. And again, this is totally different if you don't have a lathe. Like I said, you're going to want to use one of those buffing pads. Um, uh, something like this or something like the drill attachment I showed you earlier. Um, and with that, you would just take, so if you don't have a lathe, you would just take like this, take the mother's polish and spread it right on the lowers, like so, and uh, just run that. You would hold it in your hands and just run that back and forth on that pad. I have a lathe, thankfully, um, so I will be doing all my polishing on the lathe. Um, so the way I do that, I already have polish on there now. But I would take my rag, dip just the corner, and like so. We would turn the lathe on. It makes a mess. It splatters stuff everywhere. And I just press down with my rag. And you have to be super careful because those teeth right there, yeah, those ones, those things will rip your damn finger off. So you have to be super careful. Like filming right now, probably not a good idea. I don't recommend anybody else doing that. It's not smart. Um, yeah, so I just do this and I slowly run it down. And again, you gotta look out down here because you got that little, uh, the bolt down on the bottom, which will rip your goddamn fingernail off quick. So, before I hurt myself, I'm going to put the camera down. Um, I'll film a little bit of it. Again, I'll speed it up so it doesn't take so long. And uh, then I'll show you guys what it looks like. guys the finished product it is now shaved polished and ready to be rebuilt 